So for these next couple of weeks, I'm going to be in a land of waterfalls, fjords, dramatic cliffs. Check this out. So I'm getting ready to teach back-to-back -back workshops with Mass Peter Iverson. We're in the Faroe Islands and I'm so excited. Mass knows this place like nobody else that I know. And I'm gonna be leaning on him heavily for locations since this is my first time ever being here. We have two workshops back-to-back. -back. I'm going to do my best to film as much of it as I can without taking away from the experience of the participants. But so excited to be here. This place is beautiful. So I've got to run to the airport, pick up our participants, let them get a little bit of sleep, and then we're going to be shooting in the morning. Can't wait to share this with you guys. <laughs> Workshop is heading out to the sea arch that is pronounced Dunganir, Dragonir, Dragon. I can't pronounce anything here. This particular sea stack or sea arch that is just absolutely incredible. The hike is a longish, it's about two and a half miles in, I believe, but it's very beautiful. It's not too difficult, a little bit of elevation gain, but really, really cool place. And I'm about to turn the corner and see it for the first time. Oh, well, that's not out of my frame, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh! All right, hips to the side, honey. More negative space in the arms. <laughs> and give us a half face. Yeah. This is the guy that is helping me here. He's actually the guy that's doing the majority of the work because he knows the place. But how do you pronounce this place? Dranganir. Ish. Dr Dranganir. Yes. Is that pretty good? Yeah. Do I have to yeah. do the rolly R? Yeah, I'm not sure because I don't speak Faroese. So. <laughs> okay. This is a really iconic spot. Like you've seen lots of images from here. We're, right now we're just kind of up the hill from where you see most of the shots. And what this is allowing us to do is to photograph the island that's back behind, which is very beautiful in its own own way. Now we're gonna work our way down the hill, which is much easier than working our way up the hill. And now we'll go down and get our shots of the arch, but we have these really moody, rain-filled skies that is just, it feels very Faroe Islands. And, and it's really cool. I love the moodiness. So it's pretty windy, so I'm sure the audio is not going to be great. But this is what this arch looks like. It's incredible. It's huge and it's really unique. You know, the way it's got the angled top, I think it's really, really unique. You don't see a lot of arches like that. So we've been experimenting a lot with longer exposures here. Um, been encouraging people to throw on the tent stop and, and do really long exposures, you know, two minutes long or so. And that's pretty rare for me. I don't do that often, but the reason I'm choosing to do it here is because the water is not really adding a whole lot. There's not a lot of water movement going on. And personally, if the water is not helping, 
we might as well smooth it out and and kind of go with that longer exposure it makes for a very simple kind of calm image but what i am doing is i'm doing a faster shutter speed for not only for the rock formation so the wind is not affecting our sharpness but also for all the texture that we have in the sky the texture is adding this wonderful moodiness and you don't want to lose that through that long exposure so i'm masking them together short shutter speed for the rock formation for the sky long shutter speed for the for the water looks like we got a rainstorm coming in but tis tis how it goes in the pharaohs Um, so a couple things to note about this particular trail, it's, I think it's about two and a half miles in and you do have to hire a guide to get in here now. So it hasn't always been that way, but we, we hired a guy named Thomas who's brought us in. So we have to pay the guide and we have to pay our entry fee. Once you're here, it's totally worth it. So there's rumors that we might get to go on a little boat ride and actually get on that particular island, which is very rare. Not many people get to do that that could add to the coolness of the of the day but right now we're just kind of wandering around exploring and staring at some rain clouds that are about to hit us so time to get moving So we've come down to the shoreline right next to the arches and it's I actually like this angle more than up up above because the, the arches are protruding up against the horizon and you get some really nice bright highlights go shining through the arch rather than just seeing water through it. It's a little bit challenging of a spot to shoot with a group. It's very much a you know single file type shooting position. But really see the potential of this particular spot. I'm not sure that I'm going to get a chance to shoot here but we got some really cool dramatic skies going on and not a whole lot of surf action so that's one of the challenging parts of this is that one of the coolest things that you can get is some interesting surf kind of rushing through the frame forming those leading lines the surf is very mild today so we're not going to get much of that so we might just kind of go for some longer exposure type stuff but really moody and really cool so I have, as I've mentioned, we're here with Mass Peter Iverson. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel. What is this place called again? Dranganir. Dranganir. Yes. Dranganir. On the island of Vaga. Vaga. In the Faroe Islands. In the Faroe Islands. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> you have some epic, absolutely epic photos Indeed. of this location. <laughs> um, but I actually love this really deep atmospheric thing that we have going on because it just, it adds that sense of moodiness. And sometimes a location is not always best shot in just a blow up sunrise or sunset like most photographers think. Sometimes, you know, you can get a lot more feeling from an image with conditions like these. I'm excited. I'm, I completely agree. It's really, today we just get something completely different from what I've got before. It's not better or worse. It's it's just different. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. it, all depends on what you want to show with the image and of course you have to accept the conditions you have it's really just i love this i'm looking so much forward to process my own photo from here yeah because there's nothing more fun than you know burning down some of the dark areas in a really dramatic sky and making it even darker and moodier and more mordor i love a good mordor sky but apparently we're gonna go hop on a boat and go over to that island over there which is a pretty unique opportunity because people don't get to do that very often so that should be cool too. Yeah, the only reason why we can do it is because the sea is as calm as it is. Right. Like sometimes I've seen waves which is literally go halfway up Drangenir, the sea stack here in the background on, on the tall side. And the place where we are standing can be all drowned in water. So yeah. it, it's a very unique uh, situation for us to get out there, which yeah. is super cool. We're looking yeah. forward to it. So that'll be fun. There's nothing like riding in a Zodiac in the Faroe Islands in a rainstorm, and it should be fun.
have had the very, very rare pleasure to be able to take a boat over to the island that is back behind the arches that are photographed pretty often. Very, very few people get to come out here. Apparently this is a very, a very privileged, exclusive thing that we're doing right now. We did have to pay a fair bit of money to hire a boat and apparently it's kind of a controversial thing with some of the locals, but it's an amazing place. Really dramatic spires in the background. Um, a little bit of a compositional exercise. You're left scrambling for a foreground. Our skies are starting to get pretty dark and flat. Not a lot going on, but we're still trying to make the most of this rare opportunity of finding something. Boat ride over was interesting, <laughs> pretty cool. Fun little experience for the participants too. So we've been shooting here on the island for about an hour and a half. That's a, the amount of time that we've been given. And it's been challenging, but really, really fun. What a unique rock formation. I, I don't know, how, how tall do you think that is, Mess? It looks- 50 meters, 200 meters? Right, I would guess it's like 400 feet, 500 feet, somewhere in there. It's, it's quite large and it's just such a unique geological thing that you only see in the Faroe Islands. These are some of the most impressive cliffs and jagged spires that I've ever seen. We've been struggling a little bit to find compositions because, you know, it's our skies have been kind of flat and we haven't had tons for sky, but still what a privilege to be able to come out on this small island where a lot of people don't get to come. It's been very, very cool. It's 15 minutes after 11 when we trekked out, we left the parking lot at three. So it's been a little bit of a trek. I'm ready for some rest and some food. Yeah, that's, that stuff sounds pretty nice. So we're gonna start walking back to the boats. We're gonna take our boat ride back to the town and we're gonna drive to our hotel and eventually get to sleep. So I'm excited to see what happens tomorrow morning. I'm ready for bed.